Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is another thrift flip video where I take items I thrifted or that was given to me for free and I upcycle them for resale. Last year I made these very cute Easter Bunny boxes and they were a huge seller, but I'm gonna warn y'all, they're a little bit of work. So I decided this year, I just wasn't gonna make them. I just don't have as much time. But one of my customers really wanted one for her son and asked if I would make one and decided I would and I would film it. That way, if this is something you wanted to recreate, recreate for yourself or to sell, you would know how to do it. And it'll pair perfectly with the next item I want to make. Have y'all seen the cute little drop cloth carrots and bunnies that I've been making? I don't have any to show y'all because they have... All of them have sold. Every time I make one, it's, it flies out the door. And I will put the links to those videos in the description below. But my cousin made these cute little fabric eggs. And I'm like, that would be so cute to recreate with drop cloth to go along with the bunnies and the carrots and look so perfect in the little Easter bunny box that I'm going to be making. I'll put the link to her Facebook uh, business page in the description below if y'all want to check her out. But I feel like the possibilities are endless with this little egg. It's something simple to do. You don't need a lot of supplies. It's something you could even probably do with your kids if you want it. Um, I just have so many ideas for this little Easter eggs and I'm just so excited to go sit down and start making them. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. So like I said, for this project, I'm going to be using drop cloth. I get my drop cloth from Harbor Freight, but any of your local hardware stores should carry drop cloth. And of course, you can use any other fabric that you have available. I started off by printing out an egg shape on my computer. It is just on eight and a half by 11 paper. And I will have this available as a digital download in my Teespring store. Of course, you need to print out two so you can cut out the two different patterns. And I like to just attach my pattern using um, painter's tape or masking tape just to keep it still while I'm cutting. I have fabric scissors. I highly recommend having fabric scissors. It makes cutting string and fabric and anything else um, soft super easy. So you don't want to be too, too worried about the edges because we're going to go back and take care of those later. And now I'm going to call uh, cut out my smaller egg shape. So I'm going to do two sizes. I'm going to do a big egg and then I'm going to do a set of three smaller eggs. Next, I want to hot glue the two egg shape drop cloths together. So this is basically like sewing, except not sewing. <laughs> I'm using Gorilla Glue brand glue sticks. I like the really long ones, so I don't have to refill them that often. I know they make fabric glue sticks and I've tried it and I just don't care for it at all. I much rather this hot glue. So you wanna glue it down and then you wanna let it dry for a little while before you stuff it. But we're actually gonna do some other stuff to it anyway before we fill it with stuffing. But just make sure you give it enough time to dry so it doesn't split while you're trying to stuff it. Okay, I have so many ideas for this. Like, look how cute this would be if you added some lace, just kind of like as a decorative stripe on it. I think that would be so shabby chic and cute. Um, I just wanted to give y'all some ideas, but I'm actually gonna use a doily, okay? And I want like the middle of the doily to be at the bottom of the egg. And then I'm going to hot glue around the edges and then push the doily down. You could hot glue the whole doily if you wanted, but I am creating a cute little doily pocket so that you could add floral to it if you wanted. I had so much fun creating these little eggs. I just had so many ideas. I could have spent my entire day just making all these different kind of eggs. They were so much fun. And then you just wanna cut off the excess um, part of the doily after you hot glue it down and then you have the other half of the doily that you can use for a whole nother egg. For this next egg, I wanna add a little bit of lavender greenery to it. So I just pulled off a few pieces of lavender from this lavender pig that I purchased at Walmart and I'm gluing the lavender down. I just feel like it's gonna be easier to deal with if it's glued down. 
And do y'all remember this ribbon? It is from Hobby Lobby. It's $3.99. I love how the edges have this stitching on it. So it looks like you sewed when you really didn't. And now I'm just going to glue the ribbon down onto the egg over the greenery. So it kind of looks like it's sitting in these little pockets. Just like the drop cloth wall hanging and the drop cloth pillow that I created before on my channel, this is kind of the same look we're going for. And I think it came out so cute. I love this one. Now we're gonna stuff the pillows. I just buy cheap $3 pillows from Walmart and use the stuffing out of there. I did already stuff one egg and I overstuffed it and I didn't think that looked good. So I feel like for these particular eggs, they look better a little bit understuffed. So this is the one I feel like I overstuffed. So this one looks much better with not as much stuffing in it. And then so you want to stuff all the way to the bottom and then you just grab your hot glue and you're going to close up that hole that you need to leave open so you could stuff your egg and then you're just you want to kind of hold it in place till it dries that way the stuffing doesn't pull up the hot glue and hot glue doesn't take long to dry so just you know don't forget about this step you wouldn't want it to come undone for the smaller eggs i decided to go ahead and tea dye them for this you just need some hot water and then some tea you can also use coffee but i'm used to using tea so that's what i'm gonna use and you just want to drop them in, let them sit until it gets nice and dark, and then take your tea bags out. And I've already glued these together. That way they're going to stay together. And you just dip them in the tea. So I really love the primitive look. And when you tea dye stuff, it just makes it look so old and aged. Like it's kind of like the Waverly Antiquing Wax mixture on fabric <laughs> it just instantly makes everything look beautiful and aged you just want to let them sit for a little while i think i let them sit maybe one minute and then i took them out and then i brought them outside to dry i used two different colors of drop cloth um they have different colors at harbor freight so i decided to try both of them and see how they turned out and how the fabrics differ from each other. We're gonna do a little tea dye experiment here. So this is a bigger egg that I tea dyed and once I saw how it came out, I kinda wish I had tea dyed all the eggs. I love them so much, I can't wait for y'all to see the finished products. I decided to put a rabbit stamp on this one since the whole stamp isn't gonna fit. I'm just gonna put the part of rabbit that fits um i only have a piece of tape on here because i don't know if y'all noticed but i got a brand new drop cloth on my table <laughs> i just decided to you know get y'all a new drop cloth instead of the old one that was like full of paint for years so i'm trying not to mess it up i'm trying to keep it clean so i just put my ink on the rabbit and then you just simply put it down this is a farmhouse stamp from iod it comes with a rabbit a chicken um a cow a sheep so cute oh my god i love this y'all and i want to show y'all this little tip too if you want to instantly fray the edges of your drop cloth because that definitely adds to the look you just take a piece of sandpaper and simply sand now we're going to work on the smaller eggs i was sent these iod knob toppers and they are so cute they have all of these different patterns and pictures to pick from and i thought they would just be so cute on these small little eggs i'll have the link to these in my description below i just picked out some that had like a springish look to them like i got a bunny rabbit i did i think a bird and then a little lamb now i did find that a lot of the details didn't show up on the drop cloth so i think going with a simpler pattern on these is a better option and i'll show y'all on the next set i picked some different toppers that with a little bit more simple pattern and i thought those came out a little bit better but these were fun i did not know i needed these knot toppers until i saw them in person they would be so cute to make just little tags and just to add a little bit of charm to your pieces and they're so simple to use you just dab a little bit of ink on them, and then push them down on your surface. I wanted to show y'all this real quick. For this set, I chose a much simpler stamp. 
and I find it looks better, but I also think it's the difference in drop cloth. Like this drop cloth has a much tighter weave and it stamps better than this drop cloth because you can see it's the same stamp and this one's just much crisper so just keep that in mind when you're picking out a fabric that you're going to be stamping i would go with one with a tighter weave These are the templates for my bunny boxes and I'll have them linked in my Teespring store if you would like to purchase them for a download. I always write the measurements on my templates so I need 12, a 12 and a half inch board for the head of the bunny and then for the booty of the bunny I'm going to need a 9 inch board. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out now. I am using fence boards for this project. That's what I use on most of my projects. So all the measurements will be about five and a half wide, which is the approximate width of a fence board. So I need a 12 inch piece, a 12 and a half inch piece, a nine inch piece, and then I need two 20 inch pieces for the sides of the box. I'm gonna take the measurements and cut the bottom after the rest of the box is put together. Now I'm gonna take my templates and I'm gonna trace out the pattern. I just bring my template all the way to the top of the board and trace it out. So if you wanted to make these boxes taller, you can just bring your template to the top. You can still use the same template. Once you have the pattern traced out, you're just gonna follow it with your jigsaw or your scroll saw or whatever tool you have to cut out details. And then you're gonna take a high grit sandpaper and just kind of round out all the edges so that way those bunny ears are nice and round and I like to round out all my corners. Now we're ready to put the box together. I like to put one nail in each side I find it easier to do it this way when making a box. That way, if I need to move stuff around, it's easier to do if you just have one nail on each side. And then once the whole box is together, I'll go back and put more nails to secure it. I do about three nails on each piece that I'm trying to put together. Once the box is together, then I measure my bottom piece. I just put the box on top of my fence board and then draw out the two sides that need to be cut. Then I cut it on my miter saw and then my table saw. I think this is the easiest way to get the correct bottom if you wait till the box is all together and then measure the bottom piece. So I got the bottom of my box on and I was going to the next step, which is attaching the spindle and I'm realizing something isn't right. This part is way too small. Like these are my measurements from last year. I'm wondering if I changed it and didn't write it down. I'm thinking I need this top part to go up about 15 inches. So it's more like this. And then I have this, the spindle will be higher up. With it down here, it's just way too low. You don't have any room to put anything in the box. So I'm going to remake this with the right measurements. I'm going to put 15 inches on here so I remember next time. This box, I'm just going to paint it up and sell it like this and not put a spindle across it or anything. I think it's still cute. It'll be really cute with some, with some floral. So let me start over again and then we'll move to the next step. 
For the handle, I'm gonna be using a crib spindle. I've already cut it to size and sanded it down. You want it to go all the way to the top of the butt of the, the rabbit and then go even on the other side where the head is. You could take out a level if you want. I just kind of eyeball it, look at all angles, make sure it's right. If you don't have a crib spindle, this is what I just held up was a 5 8 dowel rod that you can get from Walmart. That would also work. And once I have it straight, I just use my brad nailer and nail the spindle into place. Now it's time to paint our piece. I'm using the Waverly Antiquing Wax and Water Mixture. Now last year when I sold a bunch of these, I gave my customers four paint options. They could do it white, pink, blue, or natural. And then I did this cute little photo shoot with my kids and the bunny boxes and it was so adorable. Of course, y'all know I sold a ton of these. This customer wanted her box natural brown. So what happens is, you know, we have all these different colors of wood going on, but when you apply this antiquing water mixture, it kind of gives all the wood the same tone, but still makes it look old and matte. When you put a stain on something, it gives it like a little bit of shine. And I like to make my stuff look as old as possible. So with this mixture, it just kind of achieves that antique look that I really love. I also gave them the option to add names to the boxes and that was an extra charge. I don't remember how much it was to add the name on, but that was also an option that I gave my customers. Now we need to make a cute little tail for our bunny box. So I'm just cutting this yarn down into a smaller size. This is actually a mop head from the Dollar Tree. I don't know why, but I just really like the look of this yarn. And for only a dollar, I feel like that's a great price for this thick yarn. It just has like this vintage look to it. So that's why I like using this. You're just gonna cut it down smaller, tie it up, and then I just kind of trim it into more of a circle and you can actually open up some of these threads for even more texture if you want it. And then we're just going to hot glue it to our box for the cutest little bunny tail ever. It definitely goes with the rustic look of the box. enjoyed today's video please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite item that I worked on today if these are the kind of videos you love make sure you subscribe to my channel I do lots of DIYs thrift flips thrift store shopping I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video thanks for watching and give this video a big